Hello friends of Herbie and welcome back to this new episode of the Campfire Talks with Herbie. Uh, tonight uh, we're having a, a very interesting episode and I will delve straight into presenting my guest. Actually guests, we have more than one guest uh, this, this evening here. First we have Ad Fermoylen. Hello Ad. Hello, hello, Steve. How are you doing? Fine. Thank you for being a guest here. Yes, let me also pleasure. let me also go on here. We have Kiss Vermolen. Hi, Kiss. Hey, hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello, and finally we have Niels. Niels Manny. Hi, Niels. Yes, indeed. Hello, hi there, everybody. Good evening. Nice to be on the on the broadcast tonight. So briefly, uh, who are you? <laughs> Who are we? Well, we are Adato and the team of Adato, um, providing, delivering, developing great software. Um, so if I may introduce briefly my colleagues, uh, so you see Kees Vermeulen, um, and probably you notice that uh, my name is very similar to the name of Kees, so that means that we are brothers. Yeah, that's right. That's a good right conclusion. And Case is actually the founder of the company. And you may also tell that he's the younger one compared to me. Um, so he's the founder of the company. And I think he founded the company about 20 years, of, years ago already, the, the initial version of it. And then we have Niels Mani. And Niels is, uh, has joined Adato since last year. And uh, Niels is helping uh, many customers with implementing uh, links, um, making aware of what is needed to do it su successful. And Niels has a yeah, background in shipbuilding and um, technical engineering. Niels may not describe it correctly, but uh, a lot of experience in project management. And then myself, yeah, my, my, I'm Art Vermeulen, the older brother of Case. Um, and yeah, we started uh, working together about 11 years ago, Kees and myself, um, and I joined the company Adato at uh, that, that time. Um, and uh, together we, um, yeah, we have grown Adato um, and we now have a nice customer base. And last but not least, also an exciting solution, including the Tameflow stuff. Yes, and I think that's the uh, the real reason why you are all invited to uh, to the uh, to the campfire talks because uh, Adato, believe it or not, uh, is the very first software provider that uh, created a tool specifically for Tameflow way back in what was it, 2013, 12? Um, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite the, hist the history already. Um, it so was a while ago. It was a while ago. So I I joined um, Adato in 2011. So I had to look it up uh, at LinkedIn somewhere. So it was in my profile. <laughs> Good that you have LinkedIn for the history. Um, and um, we had we, we, we embarked on critical chain. So uh, Adato already had a solution that was supporting critical chain. And one of our first customers was a customer in IT and then um, Agile and Scrum uh, came on the radar screen in that time. Um, and then I remember that Kay saw a, a TOC event in Germany and a person uh, named Wolfram Müller was presenting how to integrate Agile uh, with and, and then it was a game over. You, you just had to do it, right? We just had to do it. And then you came on our path, uh, Steve. Uh, so uh, I think you were working together with Wolfram uh, on the early versions of the book, Tame the Flow, um, with the previous, uh, the predecessor of the current uh, book. Um, I remember also that Case came over to Malta once. Yeah, I was uh, happy to visit you in your beautiful city. Uh, yeah, and you... Um, uh, explained all your ideas. We were uh, sitting in the library, I can uh, remember. And there you were talking for one or two hours to me. And I thought, oh, how, how can we make software of all these ideas? <laughs> and, um, yeah, I remember it uh, vividly. 
Yes, but uh, evidently it, uh, it, it did inspire you to do something uh, out of uh, those ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll discover that as we, uh, as we go, uh, go along here. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, of, obviously you, you're all making a living in, in, this, uh, in this sector. And uh, um, for you, you know, what, what does Tameflow mean as, as a business? What, what, uh, what do you see it? What has it brought you and what do you think it will bring you? <laughs> um, two, um, two dimensions indeed. Um, so if I uh, would summarize what it's brought us. Um, so if you look to our customer base or where um, CCPM fits very well, it's in high tech and engineering and also software engineering. So uh, uh, the solution links um, is, is developed as a multi-project solution and our main customers are actually in that industry. And so it's always about high tech engineering, a lot of hardware development, but also a lot of software development embedded software development. Uh, so it was more or less also a must that we um, created something like Link Stay Flow or embraced uh, uh, Agile into our solution. Um, and yeah, well, we started it already uh, a long, quite some time ago. And since then we had launching customers. So one of our launching customers is uh, Ortec, a software company who's actually producing software themselves, planning software themselves, uh, but they have uh, implemented uh, Lynx Tameflow uh, in the Tameflow approach to uh, optimize their software development process. And from there on, we have more customers who embrace uh, the, the Tameflow approach. Um, we are also working together, I need to mention as well, with uh, the team of Mr. Gijs André, I'm not sure if he's in your call, uh, so he's also a well-known TUC expert in the, in the Netherlands, specialized in achieving flow and also uh, embracing the time flow approach. So we have quite some customers, or seven, and today it's almost each customer who is starting to use uh, Link's uh, time flow. Um, and I think for us, it's, um, 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 how do you, you say it? Yeah, more or less a, a, a prerequisite to also gain a new business and be on the radar screen uh, of companies in high tech and engineering. So it's really a pivotal part of our product strategy and also something in which we, which we differentiate, I would say. Okay, let's see a moment here who's joining us on the on the comments. We, we have Mikael Kusters from Germany and he says, it's Herbie time. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's yeah. Herbie time, I like that. Yeah. And we have Nick Zdunik back from TOC ICO. Yes, uh, last week was a crazy week with, uh, yep. uh, well, every day uh, a bit of the TOC ICO conference. Yeah. And uh, I was glad to also be a, a presenter there for the first time. I was invited to talk there, which uh, for me is quite a uh, you know, personal satisfaction. Uh, we have Jersey from Poland. Hi, F O H. Okay, that's a new, a new abbreviation. Friends of Herbie, greetings from Poland. Okay, we have Rudiger Wool from the UK. He was the guest last time. Hi, Rudiger. Glad to see you there. We have Anna Sikorska from Montreal. Hello, Anna. And uh, as soon as KS mentioned Malta, she said, "I also have great memories from visiting <laughs> Malta." Of course, who doesn't? Okay, so uh, you know, and we we are always talking about technologies and so on, but we also like to have like a personal touch. You know, give us a typical day of your life. <laughs> a typical day, yeah. So you asked, um, or you said, well, you don't, don't shy away from details. So here, here I go. So uh, typically, it's uh, seven a.m. I just uh, awake at that time. Um, and then um, go downstairs um, um, and have some Dutch Dutch breakfast, which is two sandwiches with uh, with some slices of cheese, obviously, and a glass of milk. So I I I'm fulfilling the expectation. Um, and um, we I I mean my kids are not at home anymore. Uh, so the only thing I have to look after is uh, that I give the two cats some some food. So that's my job. 
um, and also I have to bring my wife a cup of tea. So uh, that's also important uh, to be also happy uh, during the day and have a good start. Um, and then eight o'clock, uh, it's, I think, on average that I sit behind the screen, um, start reading some emails, um, do some boring things. And then at 9 a.m. we have the daily Adato stand-up meeting. So uh, the guys I'm seeing right now, so Case and Niels, and also the rest of the development team, uh, we also have our daily stand-up meeting at 9 o'clock. So in the, in the recent past, we would meet uh, in Soutenaire, a city near The Hague, where we have our offices, but still that's not uh, possible in the Netherlands. So we have our stand-up in the... Um, online through uh, Skype, and then um, I listen to the development issues like high definition, like web applications, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I also have the possibility to uh, tell development, okay, these are the key things that are important for our customers. Um, uh, so that's uh, done through the nine o'clock uh, standard meeting. And then you have like a day of normal work and what happens after normal, normal work, work normal work um i know you go biking and i go biking so i try to uh go biking every other day and so at the end of the day at uh, around uh, four o'clock before dinner time at least uh, so then i go out two hours hopefully when it's uh, possible and the weather is not too bad and the wind is not too strong there's always wind in the netherlands um, and then, yeah, you, then have it's, to, uh, you have to pick the right direction, right? I have to pick the right direction. So um, the wind comes from northwest or southwest. So it's either to the northwest or otherwise I drive first to the, the southwest. Uh, so I know that I have the wind in my back when I go uh, back when, when I finish my, my ride. Okay. So and, and when you come to the end of the day, now what is it that makes you happy? <laughs> um, well, uh, what makes me happy? So from a business perspective, um, I mean, my responsibility is also to make sure that uh, we do business development as our data so that we have new customers. Um, so um, it always starts with a brief call or a brief email, and then I start calling and then I get uh, online with these people and then at some point they say, well, okay, uh, Adato, this is actually great stuff. So let's sign an agreement. Um, and it happened, by the way, also uh, today. Uh, so one of the largest retailers, if not in the United, if not the largest retailer in the United States also decided to start working with uh, Lynx and Lynx State Flow especially. So that makes me happy. Uh, on the other hand, that's only very short, I must say. So what I really enjoy as well um, um, has to do with the solution and solution building. So uh, getting to a, well, understanding what the customer really needs or wants, uh, trying to define, okay, what is then what we need in our software? How should it work? And then transferring that to a solution, and that's of course um, I only have I'm only there at the at the beginning. Uh, but if you then get that to a solution and that's embraced by the customer and it's implementing, it's running well, it looks nice, uh, then that makes me happy as well. So you're really you know, living and breathing the uh, Adato software the whole day. Right? Um, it is that that is correct. So mm -hmm. so I must confess. Uh, there are a lot of people who are playing uh, word vote or all these games in the evening. Uh, what I do as a like a game is just do some software testing. So it's a little bit um, strange actually because I'm supposed to look after customers and get new customers, but I still do that do that a lot. So we have a nice planning game and I just test it to see if it works and so on. So you've been around for a while in this industry. Now, what are the skills and insights you? you have developed in this area? <laughs> yeah, so um, what I really uh, understand a lot more 
uh, as an insight is that um, although we as a software company think we have the best software and it's easy to use and so on, you still need or it's, it always starts with something else, uh, with people who are motivated to, to change or to start thinking in another way. Uh, to embrace some of the thinkings, uh, some of the principles that come with TUC and, and critical chain project management to do that well. So um, our most successful implementations are always when we have a experienced consultant um, uh, and very uh, motivated team on board. And then we know that the software has a good uh, welcome in such a situation. Um, and we also have situations where uh, it was more software-driven implementation, and I must confess, those are typically less successful. Um, so that's one part. Uh, the other part is that um, software is also about functions and features. Uh, so we like to add functionality, but it's not only the software, it's also about and, and that's, uh, that's what, implementation. That's what makes KS happy when you have to add new features. Is that right, KS? <laughs> That's a tricky question. Depends on what we ask you, mate. Question, that is a good question. It's a trick question. <laughs> but you're, no. you're the one who's heading the technology, the, the actual like engineering effort of the company, right? Yeah, and there are two sides to this uh, medal. So you have the customer request. Uh, which is always about new features, new stuff, and new things. And there's also a complete world of uh, new technology on the horizon, which uh, is also a challenge to uh, incorporate. So, hey, you have uh, cloud, uh, whatever, all, all kinds of new developments. And you also want that in your software. And those developments take a lot of time, but are not related to customer features. But uh, as a technician, you have to uh, investigate, learn, and get into them. I, I just have to ask you a question, Case. Uh, remind me, what technology are you using to write the software? Uh, we use uh, a lot of Delphi. <laughs> and of course, uh, that is a glorious Borland product. So uh, yeah. there is like a remote connection with, uh, with my distant past. Uh, yeah, you have been there. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So Delphi is like uh, <clears throat> the quintessential um, software that in, like incarnates the spirit of Borland. That's all performance, performance, performance. Mm -hmm. And that became, for me, then became like the, the driver for, uh, for Tameflow. It's hyper performing. Okay, yeah. so um, let's maybe uh, now go back a bit uh, to the last couple of questions here. Now, what rewards have you had and, and what challenges do you see in this industry going forward, especially for Tameflow? Yeah, so um, in terms of rewards, um, also related to Tameflow, so I think I mentioned a little bit uh, about it. Uh, so it's a pivotal way of thinking. Um, which helps us to to um, to, to uh, have customers, new customers uh, coming to Adatom. So it's really a pivotal part of our solution. Um, and if it comes to um, the future, uh, so uh, what uh, what would be uh, constraints, so to speak, or what would uh, what would limit further uh, adoption? So I think that the biggest challenge is still that um, the understanding of why would this work for us and why would this principle uh, be helpful, uh, that that understanding and to make that more uh, common knowledge or more mainstream, that that is actually the biggest challenge, I would say. Yeah. I think um, that is the challenge to make it mainstream. Sorry? Yeah. That's your challenge, Steve, to make it mainstream. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that. But yes, that's uh, that's right. And I, uh, as I've been saying a, a few times on, on the campfires lately, um, it is actually Daniel Duaron's merit that this is happening because he is the one who uh, who 
pushed me and uh, he has a lot of energy he yeah. pushed me to uh, to get out of uh, like my comfort zone of uh, um, conveniently using Tameflow as my secret sauce when I was like a solo consultant on the field and it worked very very well but he said no you have to you have to bring this to the broader world and uh, and start uh, offering it as the high performance alternative to all the scrums and canvas and saves and uh, and you name it so mm -hmm. yes that's uh, that's the next stage of uh, development of uh, of Tameflow to to become like the mainstream or one of the of the mainstream uh, approaches and methodologies. Um, one last thing here, um, you know, we we also have a community site, and I know you you joined uh, recently. Um, so, what would you like to? to see from that community? What would you like to give or get out of it? <clears throat> um, yeah, so um, I think I would see it as a kind of antennas to understand what is living in the community. Um, and, um, and my thinking is always, but uh, I'm also looking at my colleagues, is always, okay, uh, what are the things that are in need or what are the must-haves or what is important to uh, uh, to this community and how can we help building a solution that would uh, fit to the needs or the ideas or the suggestions so so that's always where i'm always what i'm looking at uh, and trying to to do translate what i'm hearing into um, into how a solution could work and, and on the other hand i mean um we also have sometimes some um, dilemmas or some questions ourselves. So uh, I already looked at uh, some of the postings about um, um, about there was one about the uh, understanding the fever chart. So I'm, I'm not sure if I remember well, but that also had a lot of interesting uh, content and also would like to contrib contribute to that discussion. Well, so that's great. No, I'm I'm just reminding everyone that um, the community is at uh, https community .tameflow com, and hearing this, you know, I uh, I well, I invite you to take advantage of the community. So, if you want to like brainstorm about new ideas or or like test new ideas, you no, know, just post uh, post uh, something there and. Let's see how how people react and conversely you know the the field practitioners who are facing the problems every day if they feel that there is a feature or something that they would uh, would like to have or if they are just wondering does uh, adato offer this they can use the community to um, interact and interface with uh, with you but hey you know what we are running short of time and typically i would uh, I would ask you at this point to 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 ask me some questions, but time is running short. So I would say let's skip that. Uh, there will be plenty of people who ask me questions all the time, and maybe we can catch up later or another time. But you know, I really want to see this software, and <laughs> I think those listening want to see it as well. So shall we maybe do a a demo? You, can you um, share your screen and show us something? Now, Steve? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that's that's my part. Yes, all yes, right. Kes, you've you, never seen yeah, that software before, something. right? <laughs> I am and it's, I'm just as curious as you uh, are, uh, Steve. <laughs> okay. So, and we have a nice you time. Only see, you only see the code, case. Uh, case. You never look at the results. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, please share uh, your screen. I think you you need to do something there with the buttons. Yeah, I'm doing it. Yeah. Let's see. Hopefully something helped. Works. Okay, it's streaming. It's uh, it's coming up. And there we have it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. Please uh, so, guide us through this. I. Yeah, so I prepared a little bit, so um, so you you can understand what I'm trying to achieve in these few minutes uh, that we have. Um, 
So I joined the presentation of Steve during the Tokiko and I went through the video again and I also looked at uh, the, the slides. I and, recognize uh, that the slide. slide number four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the should mention Steve, thanks to Steve Tennant. So that's your slide. So I don't want to claim it, Steve, but it's a really nice slide. And that's actually what I would like to achieve that you see a little bit about how is time managing links and how's flow managed with our solution. So that's the target I want to achieve in these uh, 20 minutes. Um, and uh, as a start, a little helicopter view. Uh, briefly, two customer examples, and I don't take a lot of time. And then, of course, demo gets the biggest part. So this is uh, quickly done. And then uh, we do a lot of uh, demo stuff. Um, so in terms of our footprint, um, this is uh, the structure. So uh, the, the core where we started 11 years ago, building a critical chain solution is in the middle with projects, with stages, phases, tasks, buffers, and the whole uh, the whole thing. Uh, then you also have the multi-project view, uh, which brings, which comes with a fever chart, uh, which comes with scenario planning, uh, and that's done through links. Uh, so these two components are done through links. And then, um, and we have been talking about that uh, during this, uh, during this uh, meeting, and we have been working on that since 2011, uh, is the integration of um, Agile or Kanban workflows embedded within projects. And that's done with Link Stainflow. And nowadays, I also must say that uh, also Link Stainflow can be done, can run standalone. So you don't really need uh, the, the links or the, or the project stuff. And that uh, is interesting when you are talking about uh, services workflows. Um, so within Link Stainflow, you have the cards. Uh, with uh, uh, with flow times uh, or sizes, and then oh sorry the wrong direction, and there's also a lot of multi-project resource management. So that's about it. Um, regarding customers and launching customers, so this is a software engineering company I talked about, um, and they started with links I think about four or five years ago, um, if I'm correct. Um, and I'm really happy. The, the, at yeah. that time, they were happy, and I can tell you they are still happy, <laughs> still using the software. And this was taken during the first Tentup meeting, and what you see here is really a TameFlow task board, or including uh, a lot of the features I'm going to uh, display in a minute. Um, so uh, the and, team is really... And yes. So, sorry to interrupt, but you know, we have a, <clears throat> a question from Jersey. Okay. Please explain the difference between links and links name flow. Maybe you will go into that in the in the rest of your presentation. Um, okay, it will be very clear in my presentation. Okay, thank so you. It's a, it's two separate products but integrated. Okay. Um, and links name flow relates really to everything we do with cards, uh, with stages or states, and moving cards from left to right across a task board. So that's really the name flow stuff. And uh, links is about creating a project schedule, for example, the CCPM way. But you will see it in a minute. Um, so this is uh, software engineering, um, and teams are using links tape flow every day. Uh, what you cannot see here in the background is that it's also integrated with Jira. Uh, so uh, it, that's not mandatory, but at Ortec, uh, they were already using Jira. And what the engineers are doing, once they decide it's covered, let's move this card from left to right, they just click on the card and then they proceed in JIRA as, uh, as their solution for um, getting more information about the tickets and so on. Um, just don't want to spend too much time, so I'm getting enthusiastic. So, yeah. Um, is an Another customer, and there's one thing I want to mention about Bruns. Uh, so they produce exhibitions. So these kind of nice looking things to put in museum, brand experience, and so on. Mm -hmm. So they also have a factory in which they produce those um, exhibitions. Um, and what they do, and I just do it like this, 
is that they also are using tape flow on the shop floor. So the sequence in the factory is controlled by also tape flow task board. And also here you see the, the columns again um, in, uh, and the cards are ranked in order of priority. Uh, so that's already part two and part three. Uh, so now it's about part four, um, which is about links itself. Um, and here you see uh, actually two icons. So this icon is, is uh, links, um, and this icon is links tame flow. You see also that you have here the task board structure, and here you have something else. Uh, so I go into that something else first, and that's also where Adato started as a company, uh, working, uh, putting together project schedules uh, and implementing the uh, CCPM approach. Um, and here you see um, a portfolio of projects um, collected under a data engineering portfolio. So there are just a bunch of demo projects. And this is also where a portfolio of a customer would live. So in my case, I only have three exam, three sample projects, but we also have customers who have over 200 active projects, if not more, uh, also within such a workspace. Uh, um, then, how is it organized? Uh, actually, it's on the top. So, uh, first of all, there's a My Activity list. And depending on your role, you are presented uh, tasks you can work on in sequence of priority. So, th these tasks inherit the priority uh, of uh, the project related to the buffer consumption. And this can be related to a milestone buffer uh, where you have a critical path to the milestone, or you can also see in the C, and that relates then to a project buffer. Uh, and I will explain that uh, a little bit later as well. I'm seeing this task because I have the role as task manager. Um, so that's just quite a specific role. It's like a team manager, um, typically sitting in the, in the departments. So it's not the project manager, but it's typically uh, a team manager. Uh, but a task list is also presented to other roles. So if you are not a task manager, but you are a worker on the task, then you can also get access to the task and update your task, telling links it is started. So I can put it to start it. Um, if I'm a team manager, uh, it's a, uh, if I'm a team manager, um, I also can do the uh, the, the expected uh, time, um, so the, uh, the ETTC reporting. Uh, if I'm team manager, I can also assign resources. So in this case, I selected Barry, but if I want to have somebody else, I can also do that here. So that's all done through this task list. And you see now I have started this task um, and uh, that's now put in this bracket or in this section. Then we have the section tasks that are ready to start, so that has to do with full kit, um, meaning that all work package of tasks before this task are completed, so all predecessors are completed, and then there's still a, a third section, um, which is show all, that is that there's also a lot of stuff that cannot be started yet, because it's not full kit yet, so there are still predecessors that need to be completed first before these tasks uh, can be started. Um, and uh, what we say is, well, uh, let's keep focus. So the list we try to keep clean and short. Uh, so we always show the active task first. So um, to keep it uh, as clear and crisp for the user. So my activities is a big part in critical chain. Uh, but looking at the structure, so it's my activities, and then there's also my projects actually. So activities, the project list, and here you see the three projects that are also corresponding to these uh, tasks. And here you see also the critical chain uh, flavor of presenting projects where you have buffers uh, that are uh, inheriting or that are um, determined uh, based on buffer consumption versus progress. So what I see here is that there is a project buffer of 24 days and six days of that buffer has been consumed. 
And here you see that uh, we have a critical chain. Right? So the length of the project was, when we started, 48 days, but we made progress of eight days along that critical chain. So that's the 17%. And that determines a priority or a score, which sequence the projects in order of priority. Um, and of course, the red has a high priority, a priority of five, and these have lower priorities. And therefore, this one is put on top. Um, and that also applies to uh, the tasks that are corresponding to these three projects, which we have seen already under my activities. Um, what else? Um, and I want to focus this on chain flow, so I will not spend too much time on explaining critical chain. Uh, what else is uh, relevant? Uh, and if there is a question, please uh, shout. Um, I hear something. No, it's okay. Go ahead. Okay, it's okay, okay. Um, and another key component of uh, critical chain is especially in the multi-project environment. So we typically work with customers who have a multi-project challenge, uh, is the multi-project FIFA chart. And here you see the FIFA chart that is populating the three buffers uh, belonging to this portfolio. And the idea is, of course, uh, and how do you do portfolio management using this, uh, this, this FIFA chart, is that if you uh, have a balanced portfolio, uh, let's say 80% of the projects would swim in the green or in the orange cell lane, and only a few put in the red lane. So if you have the portfolio meeting every two weeks or every month, then management or portfolio management or the company just has to focus on the red ones. Um, and then the question is, how do we maneuver the red ones to a more safer or a better zone so that they have a big chance to get uh, to be in time? And here you see also the two axes. So the longest chain complete. Uh, so this is the 17% of the D1 project. So that's exactly here. And here you see also the, uh, so, so that's the 70%. Uh, so that, that is here, 70%. And this one is the percentage, 25%, so that's actually this axis. The other thing we do, that's also uh, what you see in the slides uh, that Steve has used during the Tokiko, is that there is also the history and the tracking of the data points. Um, and I just select all, and now we see something creative, and this is a demo. Uh, so um, you see also the trend lines, which helps you forecasting what is the trend line regarding this, uh, this project. What is the direction it's going to move in? Um, typically, uh, these projects are built from a critical chain um, and a schedule. And then you have the dilemma, what is viable? Uh, what should be more agile? Uh, so I'm now opening the project, um, which yeah, there we go. So, so this is at the, the critical chain leading up to the buffers. So, uh, so in many situations, it makes sense to have this uh, kind of chain. So you know uh, an end uh, and, and a start and an end point and the buffer consumption. The time flow situation, also how uh, Steve has explained that, is more that it's a series of iterations leading up to uh, to a viable product, um, and that can be one thing here protected by a buffer. It could also be a work package, which is representing software development that need to be integrated with hardware, etc., which our many customers are doing in the high tech and engineering world. Um, I will use now an example where we say, well, actually, there's uh, just a bundle of tickets or cards uh, which are protected by a buffer. So that's the time management uh, part. Um, and we want to manage the flow with uh, link stain flow. So I'm going to a different uh, project right now. Um, and that is a project which is not started yet. Uh, and that is the E2 project. So that's this one. Um, and in this project, yeah. uh, there are cards that I want to present on the Tame flow board. Um, 
And if I go into the project, you see actually what I have here is determine a solution direction. So there's a work package containing multiple cards. And what I now come to do is just say, this is this bucket leading up to a minimal viable project protected by a buffer. And here we have another one also protected by a buffer. And I just put the project live. Um, right now, this board is empty, but at the moment I say, well, let's put this project live. Then I would just say it's released. So I do the, the quick way. I also ensured that there is already buffer consumption. So you see that this work package is already a little bit restricted in time. So it's red. Uh, and I just want to have done that to make the demo more look more interesting. So uh, let's look to the project portfolio and let's now look to links theme flow. And if I press refresh, then uh, you see actually now cards appearing, which are part of this work package leading up to a minimal viable product, determine a solution direction. And you see here the cards uh, appearing on the task board. Um, and then you also see uh, various columns. Um, and uh, you have also here a drop down. Uh, and what uh, you see now is that I have selected the standard view. Um, I can also configure the board so it's a simple view. So we have just three columns, open analysis and done. But, and now uh, we are getting into the theme flow mode. I can also use the theme flow um, 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 view. Um, and you see now a lot more columns uh, and I will go to links to tell you a little bit about what I have configured here. So one of the things you see here is drum buffer rope. So here you have a column, which is a buffer column uh, and it's red because there's nothing in it and development is doing nothing right now, sitting idle. So uh, we need a buffer here. Uh, so we need to move some cards. Another element of time flow is, uh, and to get a stable system is uh, that uh, you want to control work in process. Unlike Kanban, that's not done by uh, state, uh, but, uh, and uh, let me just pull another card. Then you see what's happening. So you see now that I have now used two tokens out of 10. So uh, I am allowed, so to speak, to uh, to have 10 cards or 10, uh, yeah, 10 cards on the board uh, before I uh, cross my threshold of um, uh, Sorry, of, I, I, of tokens. Um, I was trying to talk to you, but then I realized I was muted. So I was wondering why does oh. he not hear me? So it was my fault. But um, yes, uh, this is really, really interesting, but um, maybe the audience here are not familiar with these uh, tokens. Would you mind in uh, in like 20 seconds explaining what, what they are and what they are doing? Yeah, so let me just make it standard so it's a little bit more simpler. Um, so I have here a stream and in the stream I've set and a stream uh, corresponds with a team or multiple people working on a set of cards. Um, and uh, what we have done is that uh, the control of the work in process is not done by uh, by a state, but is by assigning these tokens to all cards that appear in the active column. So open does, is not really work in process and done is also not really work in process. So these tokens are consumed uh, by each and every card which is sitting in one of these columns. So analysis, development, review, and deploy. And um, if I would have used all tokens, so let me just pull another one. So now I've used three and I would have more cards and I would uh, go down to zero. Then you could agree within your team that you say, well, we only uh, pull uh, another card again, only one and when another one has gone from an active column to a completed or a non-active column. So it's a way of controlling WIP across the active columns, analysis, development, review, and deploy. And controlling WIP is mandatory for controlling flow. 
and being reliable. So that's the background of it. Okay, that, thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so let me... So, so this is a workflow you also used during your presentation, more or less, uh, Steve. So there's analysis, there's deploy. So I did not use all columns uh, to, to not make it too, too busy. Um, but some of the TameFlow features, and I now switch just on stream B and TameFlow, and then I'm back in the TameFlow mode again, uh, includes that you have a waiting column. Uh, it includes that you have uh, these tokens. It also includes that you are able to see uh, the time buffer. So here, you, if I just click on this, also you see the position of this work package relative to the to the critical chain buffer, actually. Uh, so you see here that this chain within this um, set of iterations leading to a viable project uh, is in this position from a buffer consumption and progress perspective. And, that's, and that is generated by links. And so this position is exactly this, this point, uh, what you just uh, saw, 73%. And that is this 73% and 50%. Uh, so this is how teams can see and manage the time uh, buffer. Um, what else? Uh, you see also here that uh, we have weight columns uh, and we do also a lot of reporting about touch time versus waiting time. And I think, uh, Steve, you also advocate uh, to uh, introduce a waiting column in front of every active column. Um, so in, we fact, see... in fact, that was, was a question, exactly the question that Rudiger asked. How do you record touch time and wait time? Um, so what is how this is done is for example if i open the card here then uh, the time spent is automatically uh, calculated so we have declared this as an active column so um, there are multiple ways to gather time spent so there's also hourly right? so we can also put hours on it but there's also uh, to make it easy for the team members, and so they, and so so it's more or less automatically done for them. That at the moment the the, the card is in an active column like review, then uh, the time spent is counted, the touch time is counted. So it's assumed that a, 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 a team member is working on the card. At the moment, the team member says, and that's something you need to agree, of course. No, I'm not working on it. He puts it in a wait column, and then this uh, time spent is not calculated anymore it stops and and that is configured and now i go to the configuration a little bit um so i'm going to configure you can still hear me i hope test test yeah 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 okay good okay good um here i have TameFlow Kanban configuration. And here you see the same streams. So I'm here now with stream B. And so this is what I'm looking at now. So stream B with all this uh, stuff. So I've set uh, what is the um, threshold of tokens across the active streams. What is the controlling property, but it's the states, the status. Then here we have the board configuration um, and and this is what I have done in terms of con configuration. So I've said, um, I want to see all the columns on the screen. Uh, so you see all these columns on the screen. Um, do I consider them part of WIP? Well, yes and no. So open is not really WIP and done is also not really WIP. So these columns uh, consume tokens, so to speak. Um, and uh, and then uh, you can also explicitly def define if a token is needed. And I should also put here this uh, checkbox, by the way. Um, 
The other thing you can uh, in, can do is if you want to have a weight column in front of a column or not. So if I go back to, so here's a weight column and here you see also in front of development, there's a buffer column and the buffer size, the buffer threshold is three. So if I go back to same flow, and then you see um, the waiting column here. Um, and here you see also the threshold for the buffer status. So now it's still red, but if I put another one, it turns orange and now it would even turn green. So development uh, does not have a risk of uh, getting uh, uh, running idle. Um, going to the configuration again. So, yeah, basically those are the most important uh, tame flow configurations. Um, there's some other stuff. So there's also uh, if the delay is more than 100% buffer consumption, then there's also a pookie process in which delays are, are checked. Um, and a lot of other stuff as well. So that's maybe... So let's... Let's maybe, uh, okay, we, we have an idea of uh, how this works. Let's see if we have some, um, um, some questions. We had Rudiger who was asking, can you manually sort the order of the projects? Um, and I think this is referring to this uh, list here so default is by buffer priority so it's priority 10 uh, priority 5 so 10 5 and so on but any column you can use to sort or id or whatever um, and you can also clear all filters again and then default sort by priority so maybe that's something more behind the, the question <laughs> Yeah, but well, we'll see. Time. Rudiger will comment if he if, if he's not happy with your reply. I'm sure he will comment. Yeah. May, may I explain something, Steve? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because I think this question is more about how you organize your pipeline of your projects. Um, so, in a multi-project environment, of course, you will uh, start off with a certain pipeline of projects, where projects are sequenced. Uh, like a business priority or a most valuable project. project. Um, and we have there a special tool for it to organize your pipeline. But once your pipeline is set and you launch your portfolio, you would like to work from the CCPM priority. So yes, you can sort the, pro the projects in any way, but uh, the starting point would be your pipeline and the sequence where you uh, in which you put the projects in this pipeline okay thank you for uh, that uh, so, so, uh, so that's that's this world scenario planning yeah okay I don't make the, the demonstration bigger than it needs to be but <laughs> <laughs> okay so maybe let's check some uh, some other uh, of the of the questions as uh, as well. Um, Jersey is saying, which TameFlow boards are implemented in Nadata? Flow efficiency, DBR portfolio, others? Um, yeah, so now I uh, have to remember exactly what you have written in chapter 14. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but definitely it's, it's the, uh, the, the drug buffer rope. Um, and uh, and I. So you do have the portfolio board, I guess. Yes. Say it again. You have the portfolio board. Maybe uh, it's what you're doing with the CCPM part, but that's where you manage the multiple uh, projects. Oh, okay. So, the, so, yeah, so what I did not add yet to the project, but I so it's also suited or it's also used to, um, and I just add another one. 
Uh, so we have here the list with projects or work packages. Um, and also these are populated. And you see now here uh, a second uh, work package or a second project. So all these streams are populated on the task board. So as a team, you would have less to one work package or to multiple work package or to multiple projects. Um, and uh, that is also steered based on filters, uh, not only here, but also based on your role, what team you are. So there are many things we have done to, to control the, the, the flow. But you can decide if you uh, serve multiple projects. Um, so, so, sorry, this one, so this view, so the, the consolidated view, or if you want to treat them separate. And if we look at them in a combined way, then you also have the multi-project sequence on, on, the, on the board. Okay, so we have Nick. Um, I think you mentioned <clears throat> Jira before, but Jira is ruling the world. Does it play well with Jira? Uh, yes, yes. So there's a full integration with uh, Jira. I'm not the technical guy here, but here you see that there is a Jira integration um, with all kinds of things you can set webhooks queues whatever um, and that is done uh, automatically so the ortec for example um, uh, what what is used on the card as a hyperlink uh, so here on the card you see an id uh, and typically that would be if you have integrated with uh, jira then you just click here on this link and that's actually the jira uh, card link which is populated here so so it's really, an, it's really a synchronization, not an integration. It's really a synchronization. What happens on the board and what happens in Jira is synchronized all the time. OK, we have Jersey again. Uh, is it possible to implement in Adato one simple work process, just one team and one board, <clears throat> and two complex workflow with many teams having their own boards? Uh, yeah, the answer is yes and yes. Um, so a very simple. So the distribution is done based on the role. Uh, so I have here a simple one. Uh, so this is simple, open analysis done or open in progress uh, review, whatever. Um, and you can uh, change that as you like. Um, each team can have its own stream and board. So uh, here's also a filter, for example, uh, configure. Um, and in this Tameflow Kanban, it says, well, if, uh, so I, I, oh, I haven't configured it, but if you are a certain team, then only the cards are filtered and coming to you if you fulfill uh, on this filter. So it's all done automatically. And we have uh, Diamond Air, for example, they have connected multiple boards. So what happens uh, there, as an, and that's really um, maybe a little bit more advanced, uh, what happens there, for example, is that uh, one department is moving a card until development. Then uh, if it's in development, then it pops up on a completely other board um, uh, in another department, the approval engineers. Then approval engineers move the task uh, from left to right, once in the closed column. Then uh, this card is then visible again, it's released, and then it's moving forward on this board. So we also have the multi-board interactions. Uh, there's one other nice form of interaction. So we see here this one with the cross. So there's also a dependency control uh, that you can only move something if another card is completed or uh, and it can be within the same project, but also within other projects. And I think uh, maybe it's if I can do this. Um, and maybe I do this as well. I've got I've got the conditions here. So but this one, ah, now you see now this, this changed now. So I completed these cards as predecessors and now I can move this card. So also these kind of interactions in intelligence is possible. And this is used at Ortec, for example, to, to, uh, because uh, the product owners are testing epics and they don't want to look at all these cards. So they just say, I see a red cross as long as this one is not completed. And uh, once they see it's completed, then they see it can be moved again. But now you see it's blocked if this one is closed again. 
So that's for, at Hortec, that's a signal. Ah, uh, I can test the Epic because all the other stuff is completed. And, and, and the product owners are then working, of, obviously, with their own board. Okay, we have another question from uh, Rudiger. Yes, great. There will be business decisions to be made to prioritize projects on top of the priority in the pipeline list. So maybe this was in relation to that other question uh, about yeah. the manual sorting. Yeah. So can can you like override the calculated priority? So not, oh, not okay. in, in the sense of displaying. I mean, the, you showed us the uh, the sorting in the, in the display. But I think Rudiger the, wants to change the priority manually. Yeah, the business priorities in the scenario wizard. Uh, not. Yeah, yeah. So, so th th this is the, the operational environment. So here we have task and the priorities and the, and the operational priorities. Here we have the scenario wizard. Yeah, that takes typically an hour or more to explain, but I can show you quickly. Um, and here you can add scenarios. And then you can, if in the scenario, in the scenario, every so these are projects part of the master. If you add a scenario, so I added scenario one, then you can say, well, actually, here I have my priorities, my ranking for projects. I know that there is a default list somewhere, uh, so from top to bottom. Uh, but in this scenario, I want to pretend that my D3 is the most important compared to other project and then you can all these exercise and it is saved by scenario so you can plug you can play around in a simulation mode um, in the scenario wizard okay and we have another i think final comment from rudiger very nice how cards move between boards yes indeed okay yeah. um i think we have run out of time so um we missed of course you now my my um classical soap box uh, but maybe <laughs> we will have you here some other time and we'll we'll uh, uh, recover that and and also maybe we can show um, a bit more in the details uh, how a data works um i uh, i just want to highlight the challenge that uh, add had this evening because he was trying to compress in approximately 20 minutes a demo that usually takes one hour or or more. Uh, the Adata product is uh, very um, mature. It has been around for quite a while. So I am convinced it can handle um, most of the situations brilliantly. Um, and that uh, it will further evolve to um, support whatever we need in uh, uh, in uh, in Tameflow, especially now when you will have all the community that will tell you uh, what uh, what they want and what they need. So maybe let's uh, let's make this uh, a wait. We have another uh, interesting suggestion here. Jersey, is it possible to download and use free demo version of Adato? If yes, for how long? Uh, yes, uh, just go to the website and you can download. And we have a standard policy of uh, 30 days. Um, but we are also not that strict. So I'm not sure if that's a good remark from a commercial perspective. Mm -hmm. But we are uh, giving you quite some time to test and see if it really fits. Um, but uh, yes, answer is yes. Okay, very good. So um, let's make sure this conversation continues uh, on this channel uh, in some future episode and of course on the uh, community side. Are there any closing words you know, any one of you would like to, to add before we, we, we end the broadcast? I would like to uh, thank everybody for the attention, and uh, I actually enjoyed the demo, so that was great. I've seen it before, but uh, <laughs> thanks for offering this uh, opportunity, Steve. Yeah. You, you are more than welcome, Kes. Um, Niels and Ad, do you want to add anything? Uh, yeah. no, so I... Go ahead, Niels. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm a little bit the same. I would almost say deviation as a, as Alton Case. Even though you look at it every single day, uh, it's always fun to see again and and to, to to play around. But I think what you said is 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 more true than ever. Um, what makes it real fun for us is when it connects to what the needs of uh, the users are. So I definitely a follow up on your offer to uh, to use the the podium that you're offering to start connecting more and more and more. Even though it's for it's my day job, eh? the, the whole day people tell me um, what they would like to see, but they're already using the software, and the so this advantage of people already using it already see what is there and might base it on what they see. Whereas if we have a fresh pool of people who haven't used it yet, but who are uh, looking at it in an enthusiastic way from a team flow side, I, I can imagine some really cool new uh, ideas that we might have somehow overlooked for a while uh, might pop up. So it would be really great. Yeah, if you, uh, if you need ideas, you know, you just ask me and I will give you a few. So uh, <laughs> let's, uh, I'll, I'll leave an ad for last, but before that, you know, we have some more final comments. Uh, Jerry says, thanks a lot. And Nick, looks great. We need tools like this. Uh, Mikkel, I need to check the tool out. Yes, you do, Mikkel. And Rudiger, thanks for sharing your product. Okay, and your final words. Well, I think it's uh, it's all about inspiration. Uh, so I hope that we are inspired um, and you have been inspired by what you've seen. And vice versa, uh, like uh, Nils mentioned, uh, we look forward to be inspired with the discussions on, in the community and taking on new ideas and comfort and to create solutions and, and products. Uh, I don't want to drive case Matt, of course, uh, so he still has the person in charge of the development. So we have to find balance. Uh, but I look forward to uh, receiving ideas and uh, move things forward in general, in software, but also in conceptual um, and uh, in, in the way of thinking. Uh, I like that you use the word inspired because, you know, inspired leadership is uh, one of the patterns that I refer to in Tameflow. And uh, I think you are clearly exercising uh, leadership in uh, uh, providing these tools that support these uh, concepts. So I want to thank you guys because uh, you uh, you believe this uh, in this idea you know, very, very early. Uh, of course, it was a bit of a bet, but I'm sure uh, you, you uh, did not resist a lot when Wolfram was trying to convince you. So uh, <laughs> that's, that's maybe the, the root cause of... Uh, of getting this going, but you know, you did the work. You, you, you picked up the idea and uh, you implemented this and you ran with it for, well, what is it now? Seven, seven years, maybe even more. Um, so, uh, chapeau, as they say, in your neighbor's land. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you did, uh, you did a great, great thing here, and I'm really looking forward how this uh, will evolve with the community helping you as well. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for the, the audience. And uh, we'll be back on this channel soon again. Goodbye.